Hi everyone, Teddy Baldessar here. Now, I think it's safe to say when looking at the different nations producing fantastic watches, I think Japan certainly needs to be in the conversation. So today we're gonna to be looking at a list of about 15 of some of my favorites and also just throwing in some new pieces and just some interesting ones at that uh, to be looking at around this time of the turn of 2021. Uh, watches made in Japan. Also, before we jump into this video, I do wanna mention and just kind of give a shout out to my second channel, it's Teddy Baldessar Reviews. Uh, pretty consistent content going on in that channel. If you do like more in-depth reviews, I cover predominantly watches that I have as an authorized dealer for sale. So if you just want some insight and maybe some closer, nice macro shots of some different watches and just kind of some things that you can have in your research, uh, definitely check it out, subscribe to it. I'll leave a link down in the description below. Just started that in the last few months. So just a few ground rules for this video. One is, Gonna be looking at primarily mechanical watches, throwing some quartz watches in there as well. No digital watches, just because I think probably warrants its own video uh, instead of just throwing it all together because I think this would just end up getting pretty long. Also for prices, they're all gonna be based around say retail prices because I think that helps future-proof this video as well as deal with the different markets and the prices and changes in currency. Uh, just it allows us to be a little bit more uniform across the board. Also when dealing with Seiko 5s, there's plenty of course to choose from and to perhaps recommend and mention in this video, but just for the sake of, again, not making this incredibly long of a video, and I think Seiko 5s I've done in the past, just a whole dedicated video on them, I think it's probably better that try to keep it at a minimum uh, in terms of their mentioning here. And then finally going to look at different ranges of watches in terms of price, but also different categories and styles as well. So let's start us off. Look at everyday or dress style watches, lumping those two together here. Now, when people consider field watches from, I would say more affordable perspective from Japan, I think a lot of people go to the SNK 800 series. So let's say the 803, the 805, the 807, and the 809. Great choices, own a few in the past. They're fun, great entry doors into the world of mechanical watches. But I think another brand that I, I think doesn't get the amount of appreciation that they probably deserve is Citizen. I, for some reason, Seiko gets so much love in the community, but I think Citizen sometimes as a byproduct of being in a lot of department stores and having, I, I think they do have some gaudier pieces out there. They sometimes get overlooked or maybe you're seen in a different light than Seiko. I don't think that tells necessarily the whole story because I think Citizen creates some fantastic looking pieces. And one we have here is a Citizen Chandler. Very straightforward field style watch, solid case size here at 37 millimeters, so smaller on the end here. Nice thickness, lug to lug of 43 millimeters, nice 100 meters of water resistance. It does have a mineral crystal on this, but this one should take a beating. Also has the probably epitome of set it and forget it type of movement inside with the EcoDrive E100 in this. So fantastic battery life. You're gonna get quartz accuracy without the battery getting solar powered here. So a lot of perks. And I think from the price in which it's kind of inhabiting here, I think it's a great watch to consider at this more affordable end. Now, when I think people consider Orient, Dive watches, Bambinos, typically where everybody's head goes at, but there's kind of this middle range in terms of, uh, I think, lack of consideration, I, I would say. And I think one of those watches that kind of falls in that sphere is the Orient Defender series. Today, we're gonna be looking at the Orient Defender 2. This watch has some nice upgrades really in the movement department compared to the first generation. I think a good reason why the Defender uh, first generation was maybe not considered as much as because it wasn't a hacking uh, movement inside here. This one is. This watch comes in just south of $250. Case size, 42 millimeters. I will say though, much more wearable than what that will let on. With that 48.8 millimeter lug to lug distance, I find this wear is pretty close to say a 40 and a half to 41 millimeter case. So just something to consider there. Many different options to choose from. 100 meters of water resistance. Does have a mineral crystal, but this one should be able to take a beating. It's a great everyday wear. A little bit more, I would say, tactical in terms of its approach, especially if you go for that more IP style coded case. But you're also getting the day of the week and that 24 hour scale on the dial. So just some added complication there and really solid legibility. Now for the mention of this next piece, I know I might be sounding like a broken record because I mentioned this watch kind of a lot as of late but I am such a big fan of this line overall, but the SRPE 5.3 also did the 5.7, which made its appearance in the Walmart video or uh, where I went to the different retail establishments and started shopping around. That was one of my watches that I picked out on one of my stops. These watches I think are fantastic everyday timepieces. Wearability checks off the boxes, both from a lug to lug standpoint, case size, 100 meters of water resistance. I mean, these are not trying to be, I'd say dive oriented watches. They're more sports watches and 100 meters of water resistance, even without the screw down crown, gives you a ton of security. 
getting a solid workhorse of a movement inside of here. Harlex crystal, variety of different dial colors to choose from, fantastic loom uh, for what you're gonna find in the market for this price. This one just wins all around. I think it's a watch that looks more expensive than it is. And it has that classic Seiko styling that I think so many people love. Next, I wanna look at a dress watch from Seiko with the SRPB77. Now there are a ton of different watches within the cocktail time family. This one is, I would say, a bit more contained. It's a little bit more straightforward. Uh, and I think it also is ultimately very attractive and classic in terms of its approach. That classic kind of rib style sun race uh, finish that comes on the dial surface, which I think really the Cocktail Time family owns and makes their own and I think is one of the best dial surfaces that you're gonna find for the money. For around 400 bucks or so, it's really hard to beat this thing in terms of the looks department. This one does come with those blued hands. These are not heat treated in terms of bluing them, but still look very nice when contrasted with that white silver dial. Automatic 4R35 movement, not necessarily a looker, but certainly a reliable movement for the money in this watch. A little bit on the larger side as well as the crown being on the larger side, but I do think it still falls in a window where this can work on a variety of different wrists out there. Again, you do have some different options at your disposal if you do want something maybe a little bit more daring. Uh, also, you can look at the SRPB 37, which I did a side-by-side -side review of this one and that one, not necessarily a side-by-side, -side, but just showing some two different routes that you could take when looking at the cocktail time family. Can't really do much better from a dress watch perspective though, especially in the looks department, around 400 bucks. And then to round out our everyday dress category, a bit more of an everyday style watch, a new watch from Seiko with the SPB 169. Now, as of late, Seiko's really been prioritizing that 500 to thousand dollar range, and they are really rolling out the 6R35 movement across many of their watches with that 70 hour power reserve, which I think is great to see. This watch I think is very captivating. It's, it's almost, I would say, kind of walking that line of dress every day. I think it'd be worn in a variety, variety of different situations. This green dial is definitely gonna make it a little bit more limiting, but it's certainly fun and does kind of have some Grand Seiko style elements in terms of its looks on the surface. The hands are a bit more pointed, sore style. You're also getting an imprinted kind of star array uh, texture on the dial surface, which I really think elevates the look. 100 meters of water resistance, 39.3 millimeter case and a 47 millimeter lug to lug. Uh, Sapphire Crystal, I mean, this thing does check off a lot of the boxes. I know we're getting up there to $1,000 here, but uh, I think a really attractive looking piece and a fantastic everyday one if you're looking for on the watch from Japan. Now we're looking at a couple luxury options here. I think Grand Seiko, probably an obvious choice here in terms of what to look at. First, starting with one of my favorite releases of 2020 with the Soko collection from Grand Seiko with the SBGA. 427. So I was able to spend some time with this piece as well as the SPGA 429 earlier this year. These things are really attractive, honestly, I think more attractive in person than they are in a lot of pictures. And very similar to the Four Seasons collection, there's definitely a bit of influence here as well with the changing of the seasons from autumn transitioning into the more snowier months or the frostier months uh, and the forest of Japan. I think these pieces do a lot of things right. One is 39 millimeter case, 46 millimeter lug to lug, very wearable. Case thickness is nice as well, which is sometimes a challenge for some of these spring drives. And of course you're getting a spring drive caliber inside here. I've talked at length in terms of uh, what I think of the spring drive, talking about how it works on my channel. Plus or minus 15 seconds per month, amazing technology, and definitely recommend checking out the video down below if you've not seen my video deconstructing the spring drive and how it works. And now speaking of the Four Seasons collection, probably my favorite amongst all of them, I think it's tied this one in the SBGA 413, but we're gonna be looking here at the SBGA 415. So I kind of told the backstory in my top watches of 2020, uh, how I was originally wanted to review the SBGA 415, I got sent the 413, and it's crazy how that 413, I just it really took me by surprise in terms of how much I really liked it after I spent some time with it. Uh, but the 415, I think for me, where I was gonna put my money was probably the place to look. These are now, I think, still actually out there a little bit more, the, S the 413, Seems to be sold out pretty much everywhere and they seem, based on just looking at the market and you know what's available, seem to be a little bit lower, but it seems like these were still available at certain authorized dealers. So I, I really like it. I like a gray dial. The textured finish on these pieces is really incredible. I can throw up a, a shot of the 413 here on screen. One of the most photogenic pieces I have ever seen um, and also one of the most attractive pieces that you're gonna see in person. It looks just as good that you're seeing on the camera as you're seeing in person. These things are spectacular, uh, amazing looking watches, and that's not even looking into the movement inside. There's the Rasu polishing on the side of the case. 
there's just so much to like from these timepieces. And I think this was a huge, huge uh, push for Grand Seiko in terms of getting a lot of popularity in the last 12 to 18 months. All right, guys, so now moving into dive watches, starting from an affordable tier, a few places to look. I think Citizen with their ProMaster Diver. I've talked about this one in the past on the channel. I think it's a great watch to go for if you're trying to get a certified diver at an affordable price. Great loom, wearable case that kind of matches that of the SKX. Is a little bit harder to find at this point and the prices are, they just do fluctuate depending on where you look, but still certainly worthy even in 2021 to consider at an affordable perspective for a diver if you are one of those dive watch enthusiasts. The next two I'll just look at kind of briefly and I'll pair them side by side. One I know I've talked a lot about, the Orient Kamasu. Makes a ton of sense for, I would say, a little bit smaller wrists. It's a 41 and a half millimeter case, but wears closer to that of a 40 millimeter. In my experience with it, probably my most, one of my most viewed videos uh, in terms of a review in 2020. So definitely recommend it. Perhaps maybe the best value for money from a dive watch perspective that you're gonna find out there. I find that many of the Orient calibers do much better in terms of accuracy to their Seiko counterparts when talking about this entry level perspective. Uh, so certainly a watch to look at, Sapphire Crystal as well. Nice serviceable water resistance, not ISO certified, but I think for many people out there, it's cer certainly adequate uh, for what their needs will be. Also the Orient Cano, larger case size, and I think unfortunately falls victim to constantly being paired up or maybe just forgotten completely as a result of the Kamasu. Larger case size, 44 millimeters, still pretty wearable. I think it wears closer to a 42 millimeter, but that's gonna definitely uh, push some people in the other direction as well as the mineral glass on it. But in terms of a looks perspective, this is a very attractive looking piece. The bezel, the handset, I, I really like uh, the different options available. It has almost a different style than I typically associate with Orient. It almost doesn't look like an Orient watch or a dive watch uh, that you would probably see from the brand. So I think for that, it gets major points for me uh, as a great consideration, especially for those with medium to larger size wrists. Now jumping up to the luxury watch perspective, have both a Seiko and a Grand Seiko to look at. From the Seiko, uh, it's actually a watch that I did a side-by-side -side between the King Turtle, which is another watch to consider here, certainly uh, when looking at dive watches, but this one, look at the LX, and it's more of a luxury offering from Seiko, which it's pretty cool, definitely higher in the price, and I think does maybe question some people as, you know, what is too much to pay for a Seiko, but in terms of it, just looking at it on the surface, it's a really well-constructed piece. And the one that I'm looking at here is the SNR029. So, $6,000 price, that's probably the first thing you see and you're like, whoa, what's going on here? Uh, but once you actually see this thing in the metal, I think you begin to get some backstory to why this is maybe the price that it is. First, you're getting a well-constructed certified diver. Zeratsu style polishing on the case, the case beveling is very, very good. In addition, 300 meters of water resistance, but probably the most noteworthy feature of this is the fact that it does come with a spring drive caliber within the 5R65. And the finishing on the case translates certainly to the dial with the indices, the hands. It's just a well done piece. Again, does I think present the question of what is too much to pay for a Seiko, uh, but certainly a cool one at that. And then to round us out here, we're gonna look at the Grand Seiko SBGA 231. Now in terms of Grand Seiko and their sports watches, their dive oriented watches, uh, the only thing for me is typically they always size me out and I don't wanna try to interject too much of my personal opinion here, but I always find many of them a bit too large. This one comes in a 44.2 millimeter case thickness of 14 millimeters and a lug to lug that is going to make that wear closer to, I would say a 42, 200 meters of water resistance and getting that flagship 9R65 spring drive movement within. But in terms of look this one, perhaps one of the more attractive looking Grand Seiko sports watches out there. I think considering the price in which it falls, definitely a worthy point of consideration for many out there, especially with a lot of brands, I think just continue to go up market and there, of course, being lack of availability. And I think we know who we're talking about. So now to run us out, going to look at a category of complications, first with an entry level chronograph from Orient with their Neo 70s. Now, this is a watch that is not going to be available everywhere. I see this thing pop up and then go away, pop up, go away. So don't come after me if it's not up right when releasing this video. But in terms of what this watch is going for and the price in which it falls, getting an affordable entry-level chronograph, uh, I think it, it gets expensive when you're talking about just mechanical chronographs. And I think that's why this one is a winner. I think it's in a very attractive timepiece. 42 millimeters in the case, wearable lug to lug distance on this is gonna wear, I would say closer to a 41 millimeter case, 100 meters of water resistance and mineral crystal on it. But in terms of where it's falling, 
getting a chronograph looks at a more affordable end of pricing, all things considered, definitely one to have on a short list here. Next, we have the Citizen Promaster GMT Diver. Now this one is starting to creep up there a little bit more in price when considering Citizen, but I think you're getting added benefit that certainly warrants it. Case size 43 millimeters, solid thickness for a diver, 200 meters of water resistance, but you're also getting a GMT and an EcoDrive. And I think when pairing the EcoDrive technology with a GMT caliber, I think that is a match made in heaven. If you've ever had to reset your GMT, it can sometimes be pretty annoying. So I think this gets major upside. You're also getting a titanium case here, attractive looks, very legible. Those loom markers on this, as well as that handset, it's gonna make it very easy to read. A real winner from Citizen. Now to round us out, we have the Grand Seiko SBGC 201. Now in the video, deconstructing the spring drive, kind of showing how it works. This is one of the watches that I featured in that video and uh, ended up liking it a bit more than I expected. From a case size and wearability standpoint, it is quite large, especially when you factor in the pushers on this piece, those uh, screw down pushers on this chronograph. They are certainly substantial. I think that's the only downside. Case finishing though, handset in terms of the finishing there. I also think given the fact that this is a chronograph, the power reserve indicator, I, I think they did a very nice job kind of creating a nice level of dial symmetry here. Like if you actually look at this dial and see the placement of the logo, uh, the placement of the sub registers, the date window, there's a lot happening on this watch with that GMT. This is a complicated spring drive power Grand Seiko that for 8,200 bucks with both a chronograph and a GMT, I think there's a lot being delivered here. All right, guys, that is a list of some Japanese watches to consider here as we're entering 2021, probably by the time I'm posting this video. I'd love to see what you guys would consider down below. Wanted to put in some new faces, some familiar faces, and of course, no way am I gonna be able to mention all of the watches that could be considered here. So leave comments down below. What other watches uh, would you consider from Japanese manufacturers? Also, if you did enjoy the video, thumbs up, subscribe, hit the bell icon. Definitely check out teddybaldestar.com, full authorized dealer of all the brands we carry. Quick and fast fulfillment full factory warranty for all the products that we do carry. So if something goes wrong, you're not having to pay for it and it can get expensive. Also, we have price match. So for any other authorized dealer that's offering a product for a less price, fill out the form on the product page and we'll give you a call. And finally, nine out of every $10 that we make from our store goes right back into the content that we're creating, have some fun things planned for 2021. Also follow us on Instagram so you can stay up to date with the content, see some cool photos of watches. But guys, thank you guys so much for watching. Be well, and I'll see you all very soon.